CN7 is one down, and this is the facial nerve. And it's got both. It's got a sensory component that's taste and the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. You're going to find that taste is covered, is governed by three different cranial nerves. It's going to be governed by the facial, the glossopharyngeal, and the vagus also plays a role in taste. And this is something to keep in mind because if somebody reports with inability to taste, it could be the facial, could be the glossopharyngeal, and it actually could be the vagus. So how would you differentiate those? And that's why you test for things like can they move their face? Because since the facial controls facial expressions, the lesion of lack of ability to taste is probably not the facial if the person can move their face. Another function of the facial is glands. It feeds your salivary glands, and parasympathetic is technically motor. It's motor of glands, and it's governed by the parasympathetic nervous system. So if there's a lesion of CN7, it's pretty classically called Bell's palsy because you can get facial weakness, drooping of the face because you don't control the muscles of facial expression anymore, lack of taste in the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, dry mouth. This is generally what Bell's palsy looks like. This patient right here is trying to smile. So the right side of her face is smiling, the left side of our picture, but the right side of her face is trying to smile and the left side is paralyzed. Bell's palsy is something called idiopathic often because we don't know what causes it. It can come on with pregnancy, it can come on with stress, and it can just as easily go away without any known reason. So any of us can basically get Bell's palsy. Next up, I'm going to jump up here and keep in mind that I'm jumping to either side so I can try and clean up this diagram. I know it's not real clean, but I'm trying to keep it relatively clean. But this would be six on both sides, seven on both sides. So even though I'm only labeling one side, it's got a concomitant nerve or it's got another paired nerve on the other side. Doing vestibular cochlear, which we're going to start in the middle. I always start in the middle, six, seven, eight. So this is the eighth cranial nerve. And it's going to govern balance and hearing. So it's only sensory. It can cause sensorial neural deafness. We'll talk about this when we talk about sensation. But deafness can occur because there's something wrong with conduction, something wrong with the tympanic membrane or it can occur because there's something wrong with the nerve. And since our neural deafness is when there's something wrong with the nerve, not something wrong with the tympanic membrane. This can also lead to balance problems. It's not always, if it's kind of a slow injury, it's not always detectable because there's a lot that goes into balance. There's proprioception, they're spotting the horizon so you know your level. So somebody might have a vestibular cochlear lesion and not necessarily have apparent vestibular problems. If you ask them to close their eyes, and then they can't use visual information to keep balance, then you'll see the balance problems. CN9 is glossopharyngeal, and it's both. It's got a sensory component that's taste of the posterior one-third of the tongue. It's motor for the pharynx, and it's also motor for salivation, so it stimulates salivary glands. So if we lesioned, or if there's a problem with glossopharyngeal, we'd expect difficulty swallowing because you're paralyzing the muscles of the throat or the pharynx. You'd expect lack of taste in the posterior one-third of the tongue. And the uvula could actually deviate away from the lesion. So again, the uvula is basically a tug of war. So there's muscles here pulling it this way, and there's muscles here pulling it this way. And the uvula is going to deviate against the lesion. So if there's a lesion, there's no muscles over here anymore pulling the uvula over. This muscle is still intact, so it will be unopposed and will pull the uvula over. So if you look in the back of someone's throat and the uvula is deviating, the lesion is on the other side of the deviation, so away from the deviation. CN10 is vagus, and this is going to be taste deep in the throat. Something like 90% of sympathetic is conveyed on the vagus nerve. So the vagus is also called the wanderer, but it's the major parasympathetic output of the brain. So it's going to control heart, lungs, kidney, viscera, Keep in mind that parasympathetic is your rest and digest system. So it's going to calm the heart. It's going to calm the lungs. It's going to stimulate the kidneys, actually. It's going to stimulate the digestive system. And so that's all mainly going to be governed by vagus. There's a little, a little bit of other parasympathetic that say is in like 3 and 7. And some of it exits low in the spinal cord, but most parasympathetic innervation comes from the vagus. The vagus also controls the pharynx and the larynx, so it's going to be important in swallowing. A major lesion, obviously, is death because the vagus is slowing down the heart, and if you lose the vagus, then the heart will speed up rapidly and go into cardiac arrest. 
Minor lesions can pick off part of the functions of the vagus, like you can get a nasal speech because you paralyzed the pharynx and the larynx. You can get lack of taste in the throat, other parasympathetic problems, and it may impair swallowing again because it's motor for the pharynx and larynx. CN11 is the spinal accessory. This also controls muscles of the pharynx and larynx, so they're going to be important in swallowing. So keep in mind, try to organize, I've got it down here, but try to organize some of these on functions. So if someone reports, Doc, I'm just having difficulty swallowing, or nurse, I'm just having difficulty swallowing, what could it be? Could be the spinal accessory, could be the vagus, could be the osopharyngeal. All of those are important for swallowing. And as we'll find in a second, the hypoglossal controls the tongue, but it's really actually hard to swallow unless you can move the tongue. If you don't believe that, then grab a hold of your tongue and pull it out of your mouth and try and swallow. You'll still be able to do it, but it's hard. If you're a little bit more modest, just bite the tip of your tongue and hold it in place and try and swallow. And you'll see that that's also important for swallowing is being able to move your tongue. So where were we on that? We're saying that if somebody reports with a symptom like difficulty swallowing, you kind of want to have in your mind what could it be. Could it be the glossopharyngeal? Could it be the vagus? Could it be the spinal accessory and hypoglossal? And also you'd use the other functions of the cranial nerves to differentiate which nerve can actually be the one that's the problem. The spinal accessory also controls the sternocleidomastoid, which is the muscle that comes from the sternum to the, cl to the clavicle to the mastoid process. So it controls movement of the head left and right and nodding. And also the trapezius, which is a major back muscle that holds the shoulders in place. So if you had a lesion, you could lose tone in those muscles, inability to turn your head one way or another. And your shoulder, this patient actually has a drooping shoulder. Our last nerve is hypoglossal. This is CN12, and it's going to control intrinsic muscles of the tongue. So those are the actual muscles in the tongue that shape the tongue. Extrinsic muscles of the tongue move the tongue around, so they're the muscles that grab onto the tongue and move it around. Somebody with a CN12 lesion would have tongue weakness. The tongue would protrude to the side of the lesion, and this is kind of like the jaw with CN5. If you ask the patient to stick out their tongue, in a normal person, each side of the tongue would be pushed out by equally pushing muscles. But if one side of the tongue, the muscles aren't working, then the other side will push it out and push it over to the other side. So tongue will deviate to the side of the lesion. It can also cause difficulty swallowing. All right, that was a short little run through of the cranial nerves. Thank you.